You're listening to the AfterBuzz TV Network. Now the largest new media platform on the web and your number one source for after-show entertainment. Very good, Gene. Johnson. The AfterBuzz After Studios in Los Angeles, California. Presented by Maria Menounos and Bing.com and streaming live thanks to Akamai Technologies. This is AfterBuzz TV's Downton Abbey After Show. We'll break down tonight's episode and get you all the latest news and gossip. And now, another post-game wrap-up show for your favorite TV show. It's AfterBuzz TV's Downton Abbey After Show. Oh, yes. Welcome, everybody. Thank you for joining us. Big for doing it. We are here doing another AfterBuzz TV After Show for Downton Abbey Season 3, Episode 2. I'm John Comerford. I'm joined in the studio by, by the very talented Tamara Berg. Hey, everybody. And the lovely Alina Akram. Hi, guys. And, of course, in the booth helming for us is Stephen Lemieux. Let's go, guys. There you go. Ooh, <laughs> I read it beyond that cue. I did, I did. Okay. All right, lots to cover. Last week, we had two episodes, basically, we were covering in only 40 minutes, so we didn't have a lot of time to break this down. Hopefully, we'll have a, do a better job for you out there today. I, I want to start off with poor Edith, because... Well, we call her poor, poor, poor Edith poor in my family. The, the middle child. The poor middle child. Who gets overlooked at every, every, well, probably every I holiday. I can <laughs> relate to poor, poor Edith. Uh, Are right. you a middle child? I am yes. a poor middle child with oh. two sisters. And you? Alina? I'm the first child. Oh, well, if you, oh, you listen, get listen, look at you, Mary. <laughs> Mary Crowley. <laughs> That's right. Whatever. So, I mean, I do, first of all, I thought it was great that I mean, her line, finally something in this, in this house, house is, is happening, about, it's happening me. about me. Yeah. And uh, I love the setup, too, the, every, the rolling of the carpet and getting everything ready for the big day. Right, and all the rushing around. It was, yeah. a, you know, a very important things yeah. happening. Very important. And, and I, finally about Edith. And, I, you know, you get the feeling, the, way, the look on her face, that she, it, like, this has been decades in the making. She finally looked happy. Didn't she? I mean, she had this glow about yes. her. I was excited for her. <laughs> I know, finally something good about her. Her family, yeah. well, some of her family yes. was happy for her. Although Violet, the dowager said, at my age, one must ration one's excitement. Excitement. So she's not excited. No, we, we know. <laughs> she's not. But, you know, I, I, I was excited for her. I was happy for her. And I also was really, at the same time, I was kind of a little sad that... It's taken this long for her to be, to be about her. About poor, poor Edith. Yeah, about poor, poor, poor Edith. Edith. Yeah, don't, don't you think? Well, yeah, and also just, you know, that the, the, the rest of the family, that everyone wasn't yeah. just overjoyed, you know? Yeah. It was all tempered with this, this you know, concern that right. everyone had for poor, poor Edith. And here's the other thing. Even though it is, quote, her time, her day, it's all about her, they couldn't get the archbishop. They could only get... Yeah, no. <laughs> no. Sorry, yeah, she had get Mr. Trevor Exactly, so still was. they only get the local parson or whatever it is. Yeah. Yeah, so it, even though it is her day, you she's don't, second you don't get the creme she's, de la creme. No, she's the middle you child, the, and get, she's always going to be. That's right. You get the second string. Sorry, uh, even uh, though you know, she only had two months to put it together, but we, we couldn't. But she's still so happy about it. And even the way she was talking to her sisters about it, she's so excited. Now, uh, let's talk. We have to talk about way, the way Mary talked to her and what she said. I thought that was so touching, and oh, it you even brought them together. Yeah. the wedding even yeah. brought Mary and um, Edith together. Really sweet, and but I think it's so funny because yeah. I am I am one of three sisters, and we are all very close. Right, and and we know that we have a very unique situation that most sisters and, and most families May do not, not get as along close. as well as we do. And but we're certainly not um, at war like the Crawley sisters are at all times. It's at you know I, I just think it's so interesting how there are these awkward moments between them like that when yeah. when Mary said something like I, well, I wish only the best for you or right. Whatever. She was like, so open about look I know we always haven't been. Close close and, and and today won't change, won't change much change for the things, future right. it's like wow who's so, so forthcoming she's like her grandma yeah i guess she's that, got again. her grandma on her. yeah I'm and very you. honest but you know and even that you know but but again it's this it's this I, i'm feeling for edith i'm feeling sadness and happiness that you actually she had this finally she had a moment with her sister that didn't have a lot of histrionics or 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 pettiness or whatever it was just a, a moment of of honest, great, uh, you know, salutation. And and support. Yeah. And genuine, and too and, bad her luck didn't tell. Yeah, but then work. even, but tragic too, because it really, it takes that much for you to be nice to your to sister. To get along, for God's sake. 
Wow. They did almost sabotage each other. Well, that's true. I mean, I know. I mean, that, that's, the, that's the tragedy of that particular relationship. Uh, just before we go any further with that, oh, yeah. just that moment of the three sisters, I want to talk about how beautiful they looked. Oh, the, did they? You okay. know, let's take a picture of the three of us, mm -hmm. um, one of them said. Yeah, and, no, and Edith, you know, standing out yeah. in front of the church, and they just looked so pretty, right. and it was so idyllic and lovely, and I, and I loved that moment. This is a, a show that has brilliant cinematography yeah, and brilliant direction mm -hmm. and you know constantly as as I'm watching it I'm always marveling at how so many of the shots look like portraits and paintings and yes. this was another one of them this beautiful portrait of the girls I loved that it was so pretty everything was pretty I actually liked Edith's wedding uh, dress and the actual preparations better than Mary's did you interesting Edith's dress was really beautiful wasn't I was actually beautiful? talking to my mom about it today she said didn't you love the dress oh yeah, yeah. So I said, okay yes. but, but interesting Interesting though, because you just mentioned the dress. Now, last uh, last episode, we saw uh, Mary get married. Mm -hmm. Yes. And she came down the stairs in the full outfit. The, the two dads are watching her, and, yes. and, and that we get the reaction from Carson, her surrogate father, yes. and her own father. None of that with Edith. We don't get in this no, scene. Wow. No, 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 we no. wouldn't. No, instead fact, we oh. had we had uh, Lord Grantham and Sir Anthony actually yes. having the conversation at dinner, right? Right, because that's when we found out uh, uh, Dad's reaction to the whole thing. That, mm -hmm. And he's, well, I can't really say that he was overjoyed. He said, I'm happy that Edith is happy and that's enough happiness or something. Right. right. I think he helped make, uh, Sir Anthony make his decision when they had that conversation. I agree with you. Ah, I was like, wow, way to foreshadow because this he, wedding. Because he wasn't very uh, vociferous about his... No, he was totally against it and yeah. he didn't hide that. I mean, he tried to sugarcoat it by saying, oh, I'm happy for mm -hmm. Edith, but... I don't know. Yeah, you it was a, very, it all it was a mixed. Face. It was a mixed blessing. Oh, that clearly, he yeah. So you think that's what allowed Sir Anthony to really think about it and go, "I can't do this." Yeah, I think that yeah. helped him make his decision. Okay. So. Well, okay. So can we just talk about that? About how the difference between how society was back then and sure. how society is now. Uh, you know, this was sort of the time when people were were beginning to marry for love because before this time, it was it's, really about property, mm -hmm. about security, sure. about power, about politics. That's mm -hmm. why people got married in the past mm -hmm. and at least at, the, at this level of society and and you know during the 20s and 30s things are starting to change society is sort of moving right. on and people are now beginning to marry for love idiots and I know <laughs> complete idiots and so we've got this this different paradigm set mm -hmm. upon marriage and you know Matthew and Mary really have kind of the luck of being great looking people actually loving each other and it works well for the union of the family sure. that they get together so now we have Edith and Sir Anthony and she clearly loves him he loves her but that's not enough for them in this situation and in this mm -hmm. case or at least not enough for him because he's too concerned about her being a nursemaid her yeah. you know being having so to, much younger than mm -hmm. he is and having to to tend to him and and i i, I just want to i want to talk about that and yeah. and well i thought that was so fascinating because you know you still have the, that british sense of duty and honor right? and stuff and as much as he is in love with her and and would love to be with her he can't he just can't do it to her because he knows what he would be doing. So that's how much he loves her. He's willing to walk away from it all because he doesn't want to put her in that position. But one of the other great things about society moving on and the, and the advancements are he's going to live an older, happier life. It's not the same. And I'm, I'm being a little silly about uh -huh. it, but, but I'm serious that, you know, medicine is starting to advance at this yeah, time. Yeah, but and not, not anywhere near as much as it needs to. She's still going to be. She's still going to be a nurse. Oh, baby. yeah. Oh, yeah. And I think he displayed his love when he did say he was yes. he wanted to leave her at the altar. He gave her his blessings. He said he wants yeah. a better life for her. Yeah. But you still, I mean, I know, bad but why? timing. Yeah, exactly. Come <laughs> yeah. on. It really did. Really? You couldn't yeah. have done it the night I before? Mean, how many warning shots did he have across the bow? Uh, Don't see her anymore. All the, I mean, how many times? But, hey, I, but and it, it, how many times did he try to stop seeing her? And then he would get suckered back into it. Because he, he told he her no. He did try. Least, yeah, to, a couple of times. He, he told did. Her no. He and did. And she kept saying, well, I won't, I won't hear it. I won't hear it. No, I'm going to see it. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> That's pretty good. Yes. <laughs> but again, it's terrible. The way he greeted her when she arrived, good afternoon, my sweet one. Oh, yeah. yeah you yeah, know, yeah, yeah. As, she, as they come to the altar, she's clearly so excited and yeah. he's clearly so conflicted. And basically what he says is, I can't do this. I can't let you waste your life. And... And he says, goodbye, my dearest darling. Oh, I know. It's, I mean, it's, that's it's, heartbreaking. Yeah. Why don't you just say, 
say something rude and nasty and tell yeah, me I'm so ugly and spit you. on me when, I, <laughs> yeah, when you so leave. Then, yeah, Don't tell you. me how much you love me as you leave me. Yeah. It's awful. Poor, poor Edith. Is poor, all poor I can Edith. Say. Exactly. Poor, poor Edith. Is, is Edith ever going to break out of this? Is she always going to be poor, poor Edith? Is, are we going to see, hopefully, some sort of progression? And well, Cora says when she's when poor, poor Edith is in bed, yeah. you know, oh, yeah. you are being tested. <laughs> wasn't that, wasn't that, I, I thought was. it was a really sweet, beautiful it scene, was. actually. But it was. I, I'm laughing because of her response. In yeah. my case, it's not working. <laughs> <laughs> That's what Edith says. I don't, poor girl. I don't blame her yeah. for saying that. Yeah, but how about the way that you know? Because uh, oh, I, first of all, I love the way you know she she's she, she's been jilted at the uh, uh, at altar. the altar. Mm -hmm. She comes back home. She's running up the stairs. She throws the veil off. Oh, and we get beautiful to see shot! The shot of the veil. Oh. Coming so down, and everything, which was great, and then while she's up there crying, you know, they they, they start putting everything back together, and you see the carpet get rolled back out. <gasps> yes. That, I mean, I, I just thought that was a great imagery of, oh, this put everything back to normal. Tear, tearing like it down never happened. the celebration, pretend right. like it never happened. Make all the food go away, and, and yeah. then and the literally, servants downstairs. Literally <laughs> pushing it under the rug is what I, that's I, the metaphor. I, I'm, I'm guessing that's what they were doing. Nice one. So, and then then we go into her room, and she's just, just bawling, as, as you, one would expect. And, of course, mom and the two sisters come in, and she's, I mean... I thought that was a tough scene because she just doesn't want to see these sisters. I don't blame her. And there no. goes the sentimental moment yeah. that her and Mary had because, again, yeah. she hates them. Yeah. Right. And even Sybil, because we never have really seen the relationship that Sybil and Edith have. But we can only imagine, because Sybil is the one that everybody likes, that they must have at least an a nice relationship, right? but we never, get to, we never really get to see it. But the fact that Sybil's pregnant and married and, and, and Edith is never going to get married or have children, at least in her mind at the moment. She just can't stand the sight of them. Sure. And I just go, no, because Damn. they represent everything she, she wants and have. things that she will never have. Exactly. But you're being tested. <laughs> <laughs> you haven't had the face down right I there. Did, I did, I can't have it, yeah. So. What did you guys think of Anna asking her if she wanted anything, and then she responded, yeah. I want a different life. Yeah. I, I was like, a little tear. Yeah, no, I mean, you really did, they were really pushing the boundaries on how much you've, because because it was, it's really easy, it's been really easy to hate Edith for all the things she's done. And, you know, the things she's tried to do to Mary and just being snarky and all that other and stuff. And a little annoying. And Desperate. Oh, completely, completely. Right. But Desperate, they're, good work. Yeah, they were mm -hmm. really pushing that. I mean, and, and I completely felt sorry for her. There's so much sympathy for the fact that, that she's been going through this right now. But I like to response more than anything to, uh, not just that uh, I want a different life, but no. Spencers are supposed to go downstairs. That's right, <laughs> so right. Which we learned last season that a married right. woman can have can have breakfast, breakfast in, in bed, bed, but the la the spinsters or the yeah. unmarieds have, have to, to go, go downstairs. downstairs. So, and there it is, tragic. Because <laughs> really, all Edith wants is to be able to eat breakfast in bed. That's it. She yeah, she it. just wants to have the, that station in life. If but I could no. at least eat breakfast in bed, nope. Then I know I've, nope. I finally achieved nope. something. Nope. Not uh, gonna happen. Spinster. Sorry. Poor, 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 spinster. poor, poor Edith. Yeah. So, all right. Well, I feel very tragic for Edith, but uh, you know we gotta say that they, they, I'm sure they're doing this because I, I think the key w was what can we do for Edith, and it was Isabel that said give her something to do. Yes. And I think that's going to be the key. Isabel, for so darn practical, yeah. isn't she? Yes, she just absolutely. she really she does always look yeah. on the sunny side. Yeah, and you know the way Isabel's helping uh, women who have fallen on right, a, and as the path. most modern of yeah. all of them, interestingly, because she's of the even earlier generation. Right. But she's she's about finding a new profession. She's mm -hmm. about helping people. She's about doing charity. She's about you know even helping Edith, who's in the same exactly. family. Yeah. But I, what I think is that that's what they're setting up. Find her something to do. They're going to find her something to do, or she's going to find herself something to do. That's going to instead of just thinking of herself as the middle child or wanting to be married, they're going she's going to think of a larger world, a larger place for herself. Like Sybil did when she became the nurse, right? I think that's I think that's what uh, they're setting up. Well, and again, we, that's that's how society is moving towards yeah. ladies. For instead of being you know staying at home yeah. all the time, they are moving out into the modern world because that's an opportunity for them now. I feel like they already tried that with Edith, though, when she was driving for the farmer. Right. Yeah. But I think right. they, they did try that. But and I, then she spoiled it when she. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, made the moves on the yeah. farmer. But I'm, <laughs> I'm hoping that they're going to take her somewhere because it would be nice to see, uh, uh, well, somebody of her station do something other than uh, right well and they keep courted. trying when cousin pa cousin patrick came back That's you know true. and yeah. she was you know trying to be involved in that mm -hmm. and and that turned out mm -hmm. to not work out and 
you know, so they, they keep trying to bring Edith into something interesting, and mm. and it keeps on failing because she's poor, she's poor, poor Edith. Edith. I, I knew it was too soon for two weddings. Yeah. Like think, back yeah. to back? Yeah, that's like, right. Yeah. I don't know. This true. is too good to be true. <laughs> true. <laughs> well, there you go. That's how you can tell. Yeah. They didn't space it out far enough. No. It exactly. should have been at the finale or something like that. All right, before we go uh, downstairs to find out whatever is happening with all of our servants, let's take a moment to thank everybody for writing in, for uh, for going to iTunes and downloading and leaving us comments and, and uh, rating. Uh, rating, especially the ratings and, and, and stuff. Uh, you know, after this TV, we put on, we're going to be putting on 60 shows in a, in a matter of of, uh, well, about a week, I guess, is when yep. everything's open up. So 60 shows a week. Every week. Exactly, every week. And we've got about, what, 3 million downloads a day, and it's because of you. So thank you very much for the downloads, and thank you very much for the comments. That's what keeps us going, and we appreciate it very much. Please do that, and tell a friend so we can keep this going. Uh, There's something for everyone on After Buzz. There that's really right. is. We, we, we show do some every to every to Don Nabby. Exactly. <laughs> From the yeah. highbrow to the lowbrow exactly. to the fun to the guilty all, pleasures, yeah. we do it all. We do. And well, like, it is true. And a lot of times we we go up and we do our after shows right after the show. So we like to, we like to say we start the conversation. We hope you continue it. Leave us those comments and the ratings and let us know what the, how things are going. So thank you for that. All right. Uh, let's talk Hughes. Mrs. Mrs. Hughes. Hughes. Yes. You know, we were talking last week how, you know, she has this cancer scare and how, uh, how they've handled it as opposed to a, quote, modern show. Uh -huh. how, how they handled it. How do you think they uh, moved it along this particular episode? Just from the standpoint of conversation between people? Yeah, yeah. Well, again, it's that interesting thing of propriety. And, mm -hmm. and it's almost... Nobody says anything, right, but everybody... It's, it's, well, it's almost like the propriety is even stronger and, and more um, ingrained in the servants than it is in the people they serve. You know, that, that we really don't share anything personal between us when we're, when we're in service, as they call it. Uh -huh. And so the fact that she even let Mrs. Patmore know what was going on right. was was really sort of unusual. Do you think that's because the, you know Anna last week had mentioned that her uh, she was talking to Bates and relaying some information that she shouldn't have, and it's yes. against the uh, what sort is of it? the code of conduct. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, Lady Maid's code or whatever the heck yeah. you said. I can't remember what yeah. the term was. D yeah. Is it because they already are sworn to the secrecy or not? Uh, reveal anything that not only do they not reveal anything of the, of the of the people they're serving but they don't even reveal anything that's happening to them you think because it's already in their thoughts yes i do that's think that's why. exactly it I whereas do. you know the, the class that they're serving they're they're not under any restriction of what they can share and what they yeah. can't share I do think that's what it is, uh -huh. that it's just, it's such a, a part of everyday life that yes. you just keep secrets. There are things you don't discuss. Right. It's not proper. It's not right. Stiff upper, stiff upper lip. Yeah. And certainly Mrs. Hughes, because I love it. She's got a great stiff upper lip, you know, and her pragmatism was wonderful. With yeah. regard to this just or the, just the everything? Whole, everything, In but general. especially dealing with the cancer thing. Like, well, you know, I'm not going to get any better standing here. Yeah. Uh, you know, and just, you know, she's so, pr I'm going to die eventually, you will die. She's yeah. just so, pr and there's something refreshing about that. For me, as I listen to her, I just, I enjoy that character. Well, yeah, because you don't, you, she's not getting caught up in the drama no. of it. She's not allowing Mrs. Patmore to feed the drama. Um, Mrs. Yes. Patmore, whoo! And, and, and even in this particular episode, she feels sorry for Edith. There's, I think it was Edith that she was talking about, because she turns to Carson and she says, look, I don't worship, worship them like you do. But... Uh, oh, no, it's because of what Cora said to her. Remember? What uh, Cora said to? Cora said to Mrs. Hughes. She uh -huh. said, look, you will not go through this alone. Oh, yes, yes, You'll yes. You'll stay here. If you're she wondering, was really Right, exactly. If you're wondering yeah. where where you're going to go and who will take care of yeah. me, it's here and we will. That was Another a great touching scene. moment. Very Cora touching. had a couple of those. It was great. Yeah. Uh, and, and the fact that Mrs. Hughes was touched by it, and that's when she said to Carson, look, I'm not, I don't worship them like you do, but... I was really touched by the way that, that core, uh, Mrs. I'm sorry, Lady, Lady Grantham, Grantham. Lady Grantham handled it. So, uh, and I, I loved the, both those scenes. I, well, it makes the the moment of 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 feeling sentimental so much more important because mm -hmm. it happens so infrequently. Yeah, I think. And, and in a way, we get to see Mrs. Hughes. Uh, obviously not worship them, but open up to them a little bit more. Than, whereas before, she might have just you know like. I'm here to serve. There, but this, this seems like it opened her up a little bit there, the way yeah. that Cora talked to her. I feel like there's certain servants who are worst about closing themselves off yeah. to um, the Cromleys, but Mrs. Hughes was like that as well. She was kind of, I don't know, she wasn't as um, loyal, let's say, as 
per se as Carson. Well, yeah. Well, I think for me, it wasn't loyalty so much, but Mrs. Car Mr. Carson certainly loyal. But for Mrs. Hughes, it's more about this is my job, this is what I do, but there she's not I invested guess, don't get in crossed them. kind I of thing. it's not about loyalty. Yeah, she's but just yes, not invested in them. Yeah. As a, oh, as, as a, as yeah. a, she did, you know, like, it's not like we're friends and we're going to go have tea. Well, Mr. Carson and, and with he and Mary, I mean, my God, I mean, he really he does take on. He really is the second father on, to her. Yeah, and mm -hmm. he's really invested in that. And he doesn't kid around with that code of conduct. Like, no. He didn't even like Alfred speaking badly about Sir Anthony. Yeah, exactly. Until Mrs. Hughes Until said, Mrs. Hughes well, I think like, he deserves that and more. And he goes, maybe just this once. <laughs> <laughs> so, so even Carson has a little bit of give. Just so, a little. And I think it's because Edith was so jilted. Yeah. Because otherwise, I mean, it's Sir Anthony. You would, you would, you shouldn't talk like Never. that. Never. Oh, that right. was so deserved. <laughs> <laughs> so deserved. Well, so, and uh, isn't it great how Mr. How Carson, uh, you know, didn't really ask anything, but found out yes. everything? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Who told you, Mrs. Patmore <laughs> says? Yeah, exactly. No one told me. What a sleuth he is. Well, well, you know, that's Carson. one of the things they figure out is how to talk around yeah, things. Yeah, because they never actually come at anything directly. It's always obliquely. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, kind of like they're always behind closed doors. They're always behind, so they're coming in it from angles. Well, and you know, with with regard to keeping secrets and people not knowing things, it would seem to me, and, and this might seem like a really a, a stretch of a comparison, Here but comes. we have we have the, the family, mm -hmm. and you know, there are these, these not secret doors, but doors yeah. that go from servants' halls into, directly into, you know, the library or the mm -hmm. dining room or exactly. whatever, right? And, and then, so let's say Mary and Matthew are sitting talking, mm -hmm. and uh, whoever is serving them leaves, the door closes, and all of a sudden they start having a private conversation that yeah. they think is private. Yeah, exactly. And it surprises me that the staff does not know actually more, because there are mere seconds between those leavings. Mm -hmm. You know those doors aren't quite so, mm -hmm. so strong. And the reality show comparison that I make is, you know, people after they're on reality TV for a while, they really do forget that the camera's there yeah. and they yeah. start talking and saying they things they wouldn't earlier on mm -hmm. in the in the season or the series because mm -hmm. they just sort of forget what's going on. Yeah, at some point you just get So yeah. I, I'm I'm surprised that the staff doesn't actually talk more and know more but than they actually do. And that's maybe why they do and they're not secrecy. exactly but the okay. thing is they're so discreet yeah. that <laughs> perhaps they do know, okay. they just can't share. But I gotta say the best part of that storyline was how Mr. Carson reacted when he found when out. When he found out cancer. it wasn't uh, cancer. Singing, sh buffing the thing, shining and what was that what was the song? The last time I don't then? know what the song oh, was. She uh, he she stole she, my heart away was the yes. lyric. She stole my heart away. Uh, and then, so do you think they're setting up that there might be a well, little there's an awful That's lot. what I, I got yeah. from it. I mean, they've always had kind of a weird uh, thing for each other, so to speak. Right, but, but it always seemed to be but sort it didn't of seem the romantic. Right, it seemed like the professional yeah. courtesy sort of yeah. relationship. But do you think Carson would ever allow himself to have a relationship? I don't even know, but no, that, it's so proper. We're I talking know. about this code of conduct. But that's what's great. I love that conflict. Uh, he'll have this conflict. What am I going to do? B betray my principles or fall in love? And then right. the family will interject, and they'll live happily ever yeah. after. <laughs> exactly. There you go. Well, and I just loved the moment where we saw for the first time Carson being playful. Actually, so there's the singing. Yeah, so but then him sort of looking at himself in the mirror, sort of jauntily yeah. kind of tossing Tosses up the tray and then, you know, heading off. Again, we're going to get so a nice little moment to see a slightly different color, a little different side of him, rounding that out. That's great. A little moment and like we, that. as an audience, love him so much yeah. to begin yes. with because he's such a stalwart yeah. character. Don't he's you want to go up and muss up his hair or something? Just yeah, a little you know, bit. Just a little bit. So sweet and honorable. Yeah. yeah. So, and, mm. But I loved seeing that little moment between them. And, yeah. you know, now, uh, on the flip side of that yes. is Thomas and O'Brien. Uh, so okay. these two, uh -huh. who, who used to be just, you know, you know peas in a they pod. Were, they were, right, and thick now as thieves. It, yeah, thick as thieves, as we said last week, and now there's no honor among thieves. Now they're turning on each other. As Daisy said it, Thomas is in the soup. In the and, <laughs> yeah. geez, you do not want to fight with Thomas or Miss O'Brien. No. And uh, but where's the, where's the fight with O'Brien? Yes. She's vicious. She, she is. is. Do we remember Canadian? the bar of soap? Cold blooded. Oh yeah, the bar of soap. Seriously, mm -hmm. man. So yeah, never want to be. I don't. I, I'm. I'm surprised he wanted to take her on. I mean, sure, he felt completely slighted and insulted and and pissed off because of what she did with the shirts and all that other stuff. But why? Why, why poke the bear? 
I don't I, get it. And is, is it just because he has his own little self-destructive part? Hubris. I think it's just uh -huh. pure hubris. He thinks he can get the better of her yeah. because he's so clever. Right. And yeah, I don't think that's gonna happen. And was mostly recommending himself to no, Lee no, he was recommending or he, his cousin. His cousin, yeah, okay. I believe it was his cousin. But it was As a, a replacement. Yeah, he was, exactly. I was he was confused about that. He was yeah. merely a pawn in their yeah. game. Oh, really totally awesome. happened. As he always is. Yeah, he's yeah. so yeah. gullible. He is. He is. He's silly. He is silly. <laughs> well, it's, it's ridiculous in some sense. But you know, what I find hysterical about this is they all know each other. So why would you believe anything Thomas says? How many I times know. have you seen him do something that's gotten somebody else in trouble? I don't get it. I think it was wishful thinking. Right. I think he was just going, really? You might have something for someone I know? Well, this is great. This is an opportunity. But this I'm was an take interesting it. question because don't you think propriety, again, would have said that he would take that to Carson first? I'd like to speak to Lady Grantham about this. Yes. Where, how where does he get to be able to just... Knowing Thomas, he probably convinced him to just go straight to the lady of the house. Oh, well, house. okay, that's very well Or I also think Mosley's a little bit of a schemer himself with the whole getting out of the war thing. Yeah, I guess. Well, they all kind of are in the same. He's a bit of a, you know, back back alley guy as well so in his own particular if, way. If I go through Carson, I might, it might not be as... Uh, as I won't as get as far. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so, all right, that makes sense. Didn't Carson warn the servants last season as well to always go through him if Thomas gives them... Advice. Well, he specifically did to uh, was it one servant? You one servant, and she and she said if if Mrs. O'Brien ever tells you to oh, do right. anything, oh right, oh it was O'Brien. It was O'Brien. Yep. Okay. So, yeah, they're two peas in a pod. They are, I'm telling you. And of course, she, you know that now she's gunning for him, big time. And <sighs> and if I had to put those, I I I would bet on O'Brien. You might be. I don't right. think Thomas is gonna win that. Because, you know, as weird as it is, I don't think Thomas has, a, has the stomach for it like O'Brien does. Yeah. It might be a fight to the death. She's I don't just know. horrible. I wonder, I, you know, I, I haven't seen any interviews with her. I wonder if she, she must love playing that because you get to play a, you know, just a horrible person. Plus, she just looks a mess. I mean, that, that hair thing that she's got and going on. the grimace on. on her face constantly. Yeah, it's always there. And the constant lurking. We yeah, talk about her lurking. Yeah, she's always there. Is O'Brien lurking again? Yeah. Oh, for goodness sake. All right. So right. and th that ends with her threatening Thomas. That's right. So she finds out the whole thing. She yep. goes to Thomas and says, "You have, like, as to use your term, you have poked the bear, yep. and it is coming out. You, mm -hmm. you, you have made a mistake. I can't wait to see what's going to happen." How about that? Because. Yeah. We hate Thomas. We hate O'Brien. If we can't have both of them go down, then, yeah. you know, but I it's would love to see that they one against chose, the other. That they chose, you know, what else are you going to do? I mean, at some point, you got to change the dynamic. But they had these two for the first two seasons, you know, with each other conniving like crazy right? together. And to turn them on each other, I think yeah. that, that was that just was a, a great surprise. choice. It's fireworks. Great choice to do. Because now, and you, you're... Uh, depending on, you know, because who's, it who doesn't matter which camp you're in. No. You just like to fight. You want somebody to, to get, you know, at least they're not turning on the good people. Exactly. The ones you like. So yeah. That part's very interesting to me. I think it's going to be very exciting. And I love the repercussions it, re it reaped upstairs. Because, you know, Corey's very disappointed in Mrs. O'Brien. Oh, very disappointed. For not saying anything. And this whole thing, this is But now, chain let, me, let me ask you this. Happening. So, at the end, you know, O'Brien says, I'm not leaving. It was all right. a misunderstanding. Yeah. And Cora's still very disappointed. disappointed. Yeah, because I, I don't think they believe her completely. Ah, uh, yes. I think that's what okay. it was. And that first, you know, because it's kind of like, uh, you know, when when um, Thomas misplaced the shirts that Ms. O'Brien stole? Ms. Yes, stole, yes. Uh, Lord Grantham had said to him, are you not popular downstairs? It's kind of like they know look, it, that if these things happen, it's because you're not popular downstairs. People don't like you. I think it's the same kind of thing. If, if this was all started, uh, you know, and it's all fake and somebody made it up, it's probably because you've done something wrong. Right. I think they recognize right. that. Well, we also see Lord Grantham tell her all the time about how he doesn't really like O'Brien. Nobody he, does. Remember that? And how he doesn't have a good feeling about yeah. her. So mm -hmm. maybe she's finally mm -hmm. listening to her husband. And Mary and says the same thing. I'm not going to miss her at all. Yes. So, which yeah. I find hysterical. I was like, what, wait a minute. If you don't, why are, is she still in your employ? I know. If you don't like her. It's not so hard to find help. Yeah. Cora, for whatever reason, loves her. Yeah, I don't I, get it. I don't either. I don't, either. I don't quite that get it. That sourpuss. Oh. I, have, I have something I need to bring in that from, from my collection that is a, a little locket that could represent um, O'Brien, I have to say. So I'll try and remember. Oh, I remember to do that. <laughs> All right. The only other person I wanted to talk about, a couple, I should say, Anna and Bates. So 
you know, Anna's going to go off, uh, you know, play sleuth herself. Yes. Yeah. Uh, visits, uh, is it Vera? No, not Vera. Vera. She, she misses Bartlett. She visits Mrs. Mrs. Bartlett yes. about Vera. About Vera's Vera. friend. Mm -hmm. yeah. Vera's yeah, best Vera's friend. friend. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. uh, uh, Mr. Bits. Bits. Former wife, who's now deceased. Uh, that's Vera. And Mrs. Anna, also known as the trollop. As the tro <laughs> Anna knows the trollop. <laughs> so she finally mis visits Mrs. Bartlett and pays her right off the bat. Right. Yeah. So interesting that she's not going to talk to her until she, and then of course the first thing she says, I got nothing to say. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but then just talks a mile. <laughs> right. Once she finally breaks. Yeah. Uh, interesting. I don't think we should talk here where the other laundresses are. <laughs> we need to go inside. Yeah, privacy. And then, like you say, just blabbers it all out and mm -hmm. really lays out that she was she was brushing her nails, <laughs> she was making pastry, and then she was dead, and, yeah. you know, she was dead the next day, so mm -hmm. I knew it had to be her husband. Yeah. Which, what? Uh, I, what? I didn't get... There was something that Anna gleaned from all that, but I couldn't quite tell what it was. Hopefully we'll find she out. Was, she was uh, kind of talking like she was making the pie for herself initially. Yeah. Or, but... Well, well, I'm sure we'll find out more. Or, I mean, not for herself. I'm, <coughs> I'm mistaking it. She was making it for Bates. Right. Oh, interesting. She wanted him. I don't know. That I think okay, that's what that's I got from it. Okay, that's an interesting theory. Interesting. But then when Bates wasn't come home, she uh, ate it by accident or just said, that's good, I'm going to eat it myself. Maybe she got scared and she Who knows? Her life. Who knows? Okay, know. interesting. All right, so well, let's she talk said, about the, um, the friend just said that Vera looked terrified. I right. remember that, you know, very distinctly. She right, I did remember terrified. that part too, yeah. But more, I thought the, the, the okay, the jail. Sequences. What was that oh, about yeah. him getting framed or almost Well, framed? his cellmate wanted to frame him, you know, because you know, he's a bad guy, basically. They do, those two guy. do not get yeah, along. They're prison, yeah, they're prisoners. They're cons. You know, that's what they do. That's all they do. Yeah. they got to have something to do, and it's like, you know what? I don't like this guy. Let's get rid of him. Exactly. <laughs> I can get a better cellmate. But two things I thought were uh, really good was obviously the way that, uh, you know, that, that yard walk. Where they're in yes. that big circle walking around yes. that tiny so yard. Yes, so glum and... It was so dismal. Yes. Again, a nice shot. You know, it's kind of like they had the shots at, at Downton Abbey, the, the shots down on everything, and you could yeah. see it. I thought that... I, I was just wondering, I wonder if they were doing the parallel. This is Downton Abbey and its splendor, mm -hmm. and you can see right. all the stuff. And then this is this prison with how dismal that is. Right. The same kind of shot. And these guys walking around in circles, and that's their exercise. Horrible, horrible, horrible. And, and, this and is, you go from the bright colors and the beauty yeah, of Downton, the and then this gr blue, gray. Yeah. It looks like, you know, the Apple 1984 commercial. <laughs> <laughs> so, and, and then, and for whatever reason, some con gives him a heads up and tells him, hey, be careful of your cellmate. And he's able to find the drugs and hide them. I mean, that was a nice little reveal. He hides them in the mortar. Yeah. yeah. So, I'm wondering how, so, what do you think Base is going to do here? He's got, he's got a, he can't put up with this. He can't have this guy. No, no. I do. I mean, not that we're talking. We have to talk predictions yeah, now. We'll but later, I do but. think that um, there's, you know, heads are going to roll. Right. But <laughs> my, my curiosity for me, as I was just postulating that the reason why the con's doing that is, you know, what else are the con's going to do? If you hate the guy you're living with, you want to get rid of him. So this is what he's doing. But do you think they're just doing this because they've got us? That's the only entertainment they have? Well, no. What I'm saying is the writer, uh, Julian Fellows, oh. is he doing this because I got to get Bates in here somehow. I got to give him something because everybody loves Bates. And they want to, you know, they keep his story alive. It's so they got to find something to do in prison. Yeah, I think that's exactly what so. it is. Don't you agree? I do agree. Yeah. It's some kind of drama. Some yeah, kind yeah. of got to do something. There and, and they're not going to do more court scenes with Bates because no, not. nothing's happening exactly. in court. So you've got to show something happening in prison. And you got to make it horrible for him so that more and more people want to see him free, like free Bates. <laughs> Yeah. Right. Free baits, free baits. Yeah, and it's also the you know you like you say you have to keep it active and it can't yeah. you can't keep it alive just with him and Anna talking mm -hmm. about going on vacation to France because all they're gonna do is talk about okay here's what I'm doing next yeah. I'm gonna go talk to with this person with him sitting across the table so, so yeah yeah, yeah. So, yeah. okay yeah I do well, think that's a writing choice we gotta get to our final thing we gotta talk to inheritance we gotta talk okay that's right Matthew. Reggie Swire and his uh, uh, bequeathment I guess is mm -hmm. what he's saying uh, and finally Matthew learns. That uh, Reggie knew all along, or has no, I should say, has known of uh, what Matthew has d did to Lavinia before right, she died. Right, so before that, he was still in conflict. Matthew yeah. was still in conflict about this whole thing. Yeah. I can't take our money. I broke <laughs> no. her heart. I need to be honorable. And Mary's going, look, you of all people should right, understand that 
you know, this is how this, yeah. you have the opportunity to, to save, save everything. Yeah. Nope, can't do it. Got to be honorable. Got to be honorable. I'm, I got to say, I was really glad that they finally did something that story because there was one more argument of the same thing. I was going to, all right, come on, knock uh, it off. I was right. getting annoyed there for Mary. Yeah. I mean, right. at first, I'm like, all right, he's doing the honorable thing. This is mm -hmm. fine. I understand, but look, enough is enough. <laughs> <laughs> Stop it already. Open the letter. Read it. Come well, on. But, and like, that's the other thing. Yeah. He doesn't even read the letter. He won't read it. Well, oh my God. Thing. I was so frustrated. I, I, I kind of understood that because, man, once you read those letters, you can't take them back. You can't take, take back. it back. No. That's true. I was like, damn, now I have to live with that knowledge? I don't want to. But thank goodness for Mary and yeah. her audacity. Thank you. Yes. Yeah, exactly. But wait a minute. She's reading his mail? Really? Yeah, I know. That's told, pretty. Well, did she, he he, kinda, he didn't give it to her. He didn't no. give it to her, but he sort of made it up an opportunity for her to do it if she wanted but to. But, you know, that's how headstrong she is. Well, how about him accusing her of forging the Yeah. yeah like so that, that was kind of shocking, yeah. too. I was like, wow, you're going to go there? That was. <laughs> That's your wife, Matthew. <laughs> but you know, let's be honest. The way she was acting, yeah. Would you? Would you? It's not out of the realm of possibility. Yeah, exactly. That she could have no, and it did sound true. too good to be true. Yeah, that's true. It did. But and so interesting that then Mary goes downstairs, right? Yes. Right. She and goes everybody stands up. Yeah, everybody stands up. And but side note, everybody stands up when Carson walks in. Yeah. Everybody stands up when Mrs. Hughes walks in. Yeah. Everybody stands up when anybody upstairs, and then that's it. Yeah. Everybody. Anybody else walks in, screw, screw, else. screw yeah, you, yeah. I'm eating, you know. Yeah. <laughs> so Mary walks in. It's quite yeah. an event. Yes. Yes. Go, go. She asks about who, who sent the letter. No, nobody, nobody, nobody. Sorry, mm -hmm. no. And then Daisy. The the, the kitchen maid. <laughs> the, the scullery kitchen, maid. The scullery maid. <laughs> You know I Daisy. Daisy. Is she, is she great? She's great. I was so Played, happy. Yeah, great casting, great acting. I mean, because you just go, yeah, that's that's a scullery maid. There yeah. you go. She's just a sweet, naive yeah, girl, yeah. and and she has a lisp, which is perfect. <laughs> It's adorable. I just loved how everybody was so scared for Daisy, and they were looking at her like, yeah. you fool, why would you admit <laughs> to that? You know. And then yeah. she turned out to do the right and thing. And I loved how she was just speaking of Lenny. She was so nice. And, you know, <laughs> She's so sweet. Speech. She's so yeah. sweet. I thought really I'd mail her a letter before she died. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. interesting, Mrs. Hughes said you wouldn't think that that would be something to tell me. I yeah. wouldn't think that would be something but to tell. I'm, uh, I'm sure Evidently that's one, it was. one of those things. That you have to report. Chain of command. Yeah, we don't know that. Deal. You know, That's a whole world we're not aware right. of. Right. So she finds out, <laughs> Mary wow. finds out that, you know, the letter is genuine, That's right. that Reggie really did know, still wanted Matthew to have the money. Which is, which is weird, too, because I didn't quite get why, but I mean... That's, I why mean, Reggie still wanted? Yeah, why Reggie still wanted Matthew to have the money? I didn't really understand. Uh, you know, that. I'm gonna guess that he just thought Matthew was a kind. Well, he said so. He said, you know, you were willing to give up your happiness to give my yeah. daughter happiness. Yeah, but but he also knew that. Well, at least it's intimated that he knew that Matthew broke her heart. Right. Yes. But so he gave of, up the love of Mary uh -huh. because he was co going yeah, to it's, commit it's to living it. And it's, it was. You, and I guess it'd be your third in line for an inheritance. Maybe he didn't think it would ever get to him. But it just seemed he didn't. weird. He said, "I, I don't think I, it'll. The odds are are extreme." I realize that. I realize that. But it's still a weird thing to put. Well, I know in we an need to have like the, the the book that has the yeah. English Code of Honor so yeah. that we can notate that, I mean, and and run it back because it doesn't make sense I in agree. our modern. I think modern it's weird that the father would want him to have the inheritance. Yes, but. They do mention that Lavinia in the letter said, I want him to, you know, or I want you to know what an honorable guy he is. Okay, he, well, he tried, maybe that was it. I, blah, I don't blah, blah, remember blah. the letter, but thank you for reminding yeah. me. That's great. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so well, that would make sense. If her, if her if his was, daughter made that plea, I can understand it. I think it was at her request that he did well, it, go. not well, necessarily she, his own. As she's on her deathbed. You yeah. know, yeah. I just want you to be happy. She was basically saying, for God's sake, I'm dying. Go marry Mary. Right. Yeah. So... And now, okay. and then she secures them a fortune. Yes. Yay. Wonderful. And Mary, when she finally finds out, she says, if you find one more <laughs> excuse not to take this money, I will have to beat you about the head. <laughs> and all of us in the audience are going, yes! <laughs> he, right? And he yes. automatically trusted her. Didn't you think he'd run down and try to talk to Daisy and find out how she did it? I, I mean, pretty he, much the way he's been, yes. Yeah, but he accuses her of forging it one second, and the next second he's like, okay, she did mail it out? All right, perfect, it's settled. We'll take the money. <laughs> yeah. Well, because he was afraid of getting beaten about the head by yeah, Mary. Yeah, <laughs> I guess. Didn't want that to happen again. Because she know, he knows she could do it. All right. Oh, yeah. So, and so, of course, he gives him money. And uh, how about, the, this? I loved the shot when he's telling... Lord, Lord Grantham. Grantham. And it's, you know, 
again, horrible that he got jilted at the altar, and you know he's dealing with that. So he's out. It looks like Lord Grampus just going. What else, oh, man? What God else? Sake, man, we're gonna lose gonna everything. I might as well, yeah. And then we were holding out the weddings. They got now. That's that. Yep. Forget it. That's over. That's not gonna happen. So I might as well tell everybody and move. So, and I just love the shot out there on that front lawn area. In I mean, front of the manor. Hey, exactly. Yeah. That. Uh, yeah, exactly. In front of the. So you kind of get a sense of the grandeur and the the context and the scope of it all. And that's where they have that uh, exchange. And of course. Like all great British duty things, I can't, I can't take. I your can't money. take your money. I can't take. I know, won't take your money. Anybody in America? Thanks, man. That's awesome. <laughs> However, I will. Yeah. Allow you to invest. Allow you to invest. We'll be joint masters. As soon as you said joint masters, I went. Yeah, that's not gonna go well. <laughs> I cannot gonna, wait to see. <laughs> that is Matthew not gonna as go well. Master. Yeah, because you're still gonna have all that sense of. You know, it's it's great, it's wonderful, it's honorable, but you know, how is the old bull gonna give up to the new bull, and you know, and how's that gonna play out? Well, and it's a really dramatic difference in how they look at things. Yeah. You know, Absolutely. Matthew has been talking from the very beginning about how he wanted to live a more simple life. He yeah. talked about you know doing things on the weekends. What's yeah. a weekend? And, and he didn't even really want to live in the house. No, no, so the whole not thing. really. Yeah. Seven. So now and now he's stepping right in. Mm -hmm. And so you're gonna and and then you we get we get that continued struggle between the old and the new and we'll get to see how that plays out with Matthew. I'm sure he's going to pull him or try to pull him like crazy into a modern way. And Lord Grantham doesn't want anything to do with that, I'm sure. No. <laughs> Does not like to go that route. So that should be a lot of fun. But before we finish, can we just talk a couple of, uh, you got to talk know, Dowager. Yes, thank you. Okay, you I'm glad Dowager. you were thinking that because that's what I wanted to do. Oh yeah, my go God, ahead. are you kidding me? You I begin. Mean, I, I, I just, it's wonderful the way they write for her. I mean, Julian Fellows does a great job. Just gives her all the great lines, and all nobody the great delivers lines. them better than Maggie Smith. Forget it. <laughs> what, you what were just saying me? she won yeah. a Golden Globe. She, she won, won a Golden Globe. Globe. Yeah, and, so you know, deserved. Yeah. So I mean, okay. Do you, do you have some of those, your uh, favorites? And so they go to want a picnic, right? Because right. they're getting ready to leave <laughs> yeah. downtown. They're go, they're yeah. looking at this other little little shanty yeah. that they're all going Aramone, to have to live in. Era home, I think they call it or whatever. Er, it is. Yes. Yeah. Downton Place. Down, well, tiny Downton little Alley. thing. Downton Place. <laughs> this tiny little thing. Eight eight servants. So, yeah, we'll that's all we <laughs> need. And Maggie Smith, yeah. well, what about me? Where am I to go? Perhaps I could open shop. Yes. Which is such a ridiculous. Scenario and to see and, her opening and a Sybil, shop. Well, I think that might be a good idea. Yeah. <laughs> okay, but my favorite has yes. got to be uh, when they're telling Edith she needs to go and get some sleep. Uh, get some sleep. Nobody likes the night you before are, the wedding. Yeah, you don't want to look, you know, haggard. I or won't sleep a wink. Edith says. And Sybil says tonight or tomorrow night. <laughs> and please, Tammy, go ahead. The dowager responds. Sybil, vulgarity is no substitute for wit. <laughs> Edith, do you remember what Sybil says? No, I did not remember. Sybil says, I wasn't prepared for you this. You started, started it. it. <laughs> so Sybil talking back. It's bam, nice. bam. I love Sybil. Yeah, she's got. A, she's great. I'm English. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Stephen. I have no idea where that but, came from. But, you know, from. just, again, to come back to the dowager, at the wedding, yeah. she's sitting there in the audience, and she's going, you know what? Let him go. She it's steals the, right the show. Thing. This is the sensible thing to do. And so she's still, as much as she's a crabby old lady, and she, you know, lives in the past yeah. and, and needs to maintain tradition, here she is, you know, giving advice to Sybil, I mean, right. to Edith, and right. saying... And you even pointed out the first time when, we, when they're going to the, quote, the picnic, picnic, this is the first time, what? We see her in anything but black. I know. She was wearing a white outfit like everyone well, else. Very interesting. Because I think black just wouldn't do. Oh, you can't picnic. wear black at a picnic. Clearly. It's just, it's, yeah, it's just, just not would done. Be, just, just wouldn't be done. All right. All right. Was there anything else on the Dowager? Because we have. I don't think so. I think that's on. it. That's okay, all I good. had. All right. Well, then that will take us to our uh, prediction. So let's get into that. Oh, good heavens. Um, I'll, I'll start. Go right ahead. I just think poor, poor Edith is going to have still a hard time. I don't know if she'll ever get out of bed except for breakfast. Yeah. <laughs> but we will see her downstairs eating with the men. We, yes, we will because gotta be, a she spinster can't, yeah. takes breakfast. Yeah. A spinster yeah. gets up for breakfast. I've already said I think they're going to find she'll find some sort of position, charity, something to occupy her time, and I, I think she may excel at it. Maybe a new man. 
Maybe well, a younger I, I man. I think they're not going to do the new man thing. Just it's just di- it's too while. done. They've tried it twice, you know. We've already had two weddings yeah. and a two and a half wedding. Yeah, yeah. I think maybe not way. this season, but maybe d- down the line she'll finally find love or something like that. Maybe she'll find love at whatever work or yeah. she's doing. That but would be whatever so that is, that's gonna that's gonna get pushback from Lord Graham. Right, and you know wh- it well. exactly. But whatever it is, that, you know, she'll finally find love. There's gonna be something wrong with it. <laughs> Of He'll be married. Yeah, something like that. He'll be crazy or something. I don't know what it'll be. So, but that's what will happen there. All right. Um, what else? Would get any other here? predictions? Prediction: Now that Mary and Matthew are living happily ever after, uh-huh. shouldn't they be working on a baby? Yeah, I guess they're going to start right away. Do we and think she's well, going to get pregnant? Maybe. Edith even Edith mentioned that you're and, probably and pregnant. And Mary probably pregnant. Well, Sybil already is, so yeah. we're going to have a birth at yeah. some point. I assume it'll be this season sometime. Yeah. So, and then they're, they're going to have to figure out. Okay. Is the kid going to be Catholic or Anglican? Oh, oh I didn't even think of that. The whole politics yes, thing. Yes, 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 yes. Or whatever. No, yeah, notice that Thomas Branson. Is he Catholic or whatever it is? But they're going to be. He's Irish. He's yeah, but I'm assuming he's Irish, but he might be uh, Protestant. Notice he was wearing a tuxedo in this and oh, without, yes, so without itching and pulling tie, at exactly. it. Yeah, so we've seen, yeah, we get to see a change there. He's um, a little I think there's going to be some, there may be fireworks. We kind of talked about that a little bit between Lord Grantham and Matthew with what's going to happen. Oh, yeah, there's got to be. On the gotta estate. Gotta be this will be oh, interesting. Yeah. The old so, and the new coming uh, together. How they run the estate, because obviously Lord Grantham made some huge mistakes and he's going to want to. Try to keep doing it the same way, and it's and not going to work. And he won't work. Matthew won't let him. And yeah. how is Carson going to deal with that? Yeah, there you go. That's Matthew right. Matthew is a master. I and are, think, and uh, are we ever going to free baits? Yeah, we're going to free baits. Got to free baits. Anna's going to find something out that's going to help him because who else can? There's find a it lot out? of information in tonight's episode. Yeah, think, and I'm but, sure that. So we episode. hope that that yeah. you know, in free baits. Will, but as to what that is, I don't know. But and, and I think that O'Brien's going to go after. Thomas, Thomas. both guns. Now what she Ooh. does, I have no idea. But I think the fact that he. Laid the sights on her. She's it's she's it's pissed her off to no end, and it, that will be good yeah, TV. I think, it will. I think Sparks Can't wait to see what happens. Better. I hope something. Happens. Okay, well we got to get out of here. Thank you so much for listening, to everybody. Let everybody know where they can find you, Alina. At underscore Alina two three. On Twitter. I am at Tamara Berg on Twitter. Also, my website is TamaraCentral.com. Oh, that? And Stephen, they can find you here, right? They can find me here at After Buzz on the Archer After Show. There you go. Nice. And you're going to do a few others, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, I think I'm jumping on Californication. There yeah. you go. That's great. Uh, you can't find me anywhere, so don't go looking. Except but... you're doing Justified. Oh, I'm doing Justified. Well. That's true. I do and Justified. so am I. So, yeah, please tune in for that. Uh, so on behalf of Alina Akram and Tamara Berg and Stephen Lemieux in the booth, we want to thank you for listening, and we will see you next time. From Bing.com, executive producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other After shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz Buzz later. later. <laughs> The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.